Texas Cyclones at Astro World in Houston. This is regarded by roller coaster buffs as the most frightening, most devastating ride of any roller coaster in the world. We're about to approach the steepest hill on any roller coaster. It's something like being pushed off a 92-foot cliff. We'll go from two miles an hour to 60 in three seconds. Robert Cartmel is the country's foremost authority on roller coasters. This next curve will drive your teeth to your shoelaces. His exhibition for the Smithsonian Institution entitled Coast to Coast Coasters crisscrossed the United States for four years. In 1988, his book, The Incredible Screen Machine, was selected as one of the 12 best books of the year by the Chicago Tribune. And he's written a definitive book on roller coaster history. Okay, I give up. What's the attraction? I like them, but what's the attraction for you? Well, it's an extreme ride for sure, and it's a terror ride, but they're fun. We all have fun. I've been riding roller coasters since the age of six, and I'm not that masochistic. We love them. But why do we love them? I mean, there's no other animal in the universe that enjoys the idea of feeling as if its life is in jeopardy. Is that what we're feeling? And on a roller coaster like this one, the Revolution, what is it about this one that makes it wonderful? His obsession with coasters has led to over 300 radio and television appearances, articles in the New York Times, Rolling Stone, Newsweek, Time, and Life magazine, to name a few, chronicle his coaster rides. However, Robert Cartmel is first and foremost an artist. In a recent traveling exhibition in Korea, his paintings appeared in the Jung Gallery in Seoul and art galleries in Daegu and Busan. Today you can find his art in over 30 selected public collections, including the Pushkin Museum in Moscow, the Art Institute of Chicago, the Philadelphia Museum of Art, and numerous university art collections, including Yale, Stanford, and Berkeley. He's held 15 one-person shows in New York City, Chicago, Boston, and Los Angeles. Robert Cartmel's enthusiasm for roller coasters and amusement parks, combined with his brilliant gift for creating powerful and beautiful art, has resulted in a unique combination of colors, lines, and movement. For Robert Cartmel, the amusement park is a theater abounding with performances of life's calamitous and tragic comedies. Roller coasters and amusement park rides become the artist's muse, empowering him to explore several recurring themes that appear throughout his work. In the artist's make-believe land of amusement, we find fathers forcing sons on jealous carousel horses envious of other rides in the park. Brass rings are either flatly refused or too far out of reach, allowing the artist to examine the elusiveness of success. Exploring emotions and psychological states such as terror and ecstasy, Cartmel's coasters often leave the tracks, derailed by mischievous guardian angels who wreak havoc on unsuspecting riders. While catapulted people fly through the air in surprising states of blissful exhilaration, the detached painter watches it all unfold from his special sanctuary, the artist's studio. Ken Johnson, noted art critic and editor for Art in America, comments on Robert Cartmel's work. One of the parts of Bob that I don't know much about that interests me is his whole uh, career as an authority and historian of roller coasters. Um, somehow that seems to me to be an important part of the whole package. Uh, and, and one of the things maybe that, that does make him uh, unique. You know, it's not many artists that, that are invited to be on the Today Show or What's My Line um, because of some kind of expertise they have aside aside from art. But I think that's sort of, uh, you know, the eccentric uh, uh, aficionado of amusement parks at the same time is, uh, fits with, with all his sort of artistic interests in, in uh, um, the wayward, the irrational, the playful. Robert Cartmel apprenticed as a printmaker under the eminent artist Mauricio Lazansky. 
Today, Cartmel is professor of art, teaching printmaking and painting at the State University of New York in Albany. Roller coasters are, are my obsession. I noticed about 1973, I remember the exact spot on Fuller Road, where I thought, I've been on a lot of roller coasters. Up to, that, up to that point, I thought that was a normal life. As an army brat, I was able to travel around. Uh, the first thing I do is get out the yellow pages and look up roller coasters or amusement parks and head for an amusement park. We're talking about second, third, fourth grades where I was hopping on buses and then going out to amusement park. But they came my childhood friend. I thought everyone rode roller coasters. This was a normal life. And then it occurred to me it was not. At that point, I started doing historical research on roller coasters. And I found there had not been a, a single book, very few articles, was barely mentioned in the encyclopedia. So I started interviewing people. Uh, eventually, I wrote an article for the New York Times called The Quest for the Ultimate Roller Coaster. That was June 9th, 1974, and my, com my life changed completely. That suddenly I was this exalted authority on roller coasters. But it's only in, in the recent years that I put roller coasters into my artwork. For some reason, I wanted to keep the roller coasters out of my prints and paintings and drawings. I refused to put them in. Then it occurred to me, you know, these, this, these inspirations they hit you that why the hell am I leaving my roller coasters out of my artwork? So I put them in, and it's like a, a dam broke. It was deluged with ideas. I became obsessed with drawing roller coasters. Roller coasters uh, higher, as high as skyscrapers. Roller coasters as journeys. Roller coasters as life itself. I mean, it's almost a cliche that a roller coaster is a metaphor for the stock market, the ups and downs of the start, stock market, the ups and downs of your life, ups and downs of love. Roller coasters are used that way. But I wanted it something a little deeper than that. So I had the roller coaster as baptism. People being thrown from roller coasters. The roller coaster is catastrophe. Roller coasters in flames. The roller coaster in any guise I could think of. The roller coaster as a religious experience. I just couldn't, I couldn't stop it. People would say, well, that, that's, uh, roller coasters are trite. It didn't make any difference. I refused to censor my drawings. From a very early age on, I was talented at drawing. I mean, I can remember this pre-kindergarten drawing, people making comments on it. Probably the biggest event was in Dayton, Ohio. I had a drawing of a roller coaster, that's not surprising, of a roller coaster, and I won a scholarship then, just on drawing alone, not painting, just a pencil drawing, and I've continued that all my life. When we look at Cartmel's painting, Get On, we see a father forcing a child to ride a carousel horse. In Get On, the artist reveals early childhood memories that explore his feelings about first-time experiences, rites of passage, and the inevitable conflict between parents and children. Get On is, has to do with some innocent act reversing itself on you. In this case, the father, or whoever this figure is, is forcing this child on a carousel. You would always think of a carousel as a pleasurable experience. But in this case, it's been turned into something dreadful. You can think of many things, stage fright, sex, all these first experiences that were, uh, as I said, something dreadful, but became pleasurable. That's what Get On's about. And I worked that out in a series of five or six drawings. Always a father figure 
or some parental authority forcing a child to do something it does not want to do. Carousel horses appear frequently in the artist's paintings and drawings. Closer examination of a Cartmel self-portrait reveals a remarkable resemblance between his horses and himself. In his drawing entitled Failure, a dejected carousel horse bemoans a rejected piece of art, tacked in the corner and crossed out with an X. I see the, the carousel horse as a self-portrait. Sometimes they look like other people, but almost in every case, I even have the hair blowing off the, the carousel horse, just like my hair. The carousel horse represents different emotions. The faces show that. Anger, disgust, condemnation. Jealousy is one of the emotions I use often. I don't think I'm a jealous person, although I read a book re recently that proves everyone is jealous one way or another. But I actually have a carousel horse that's jealous of a roller coaster. Envy, greed, those traits of the 20th century. When Cartmel's carousel horses take us riding, we find going for the brass ring more elusive than ever. In his casein and pencil drawing, Losing the Brass Ring, the throne rider and the horse are found face to face, glaring angrily as the brass ring swings away. In Robert Cartmel's paintings, characters refuse to grab the brass ring. Others find the brass ring simply impossible to reach. Well, the brass ring serves two purposes. Besides uh, the more formal purpose, I love circles. But that's not really what it's about. The brass ring obviously represents success. In the painting Skeleton Horse, you notice that everything is out of reach. You have this tiny stick figure, very childlike, which it consists of one, two, six lines in a, a circle. Everything is out of reach to this. The ring is way at the top of the painting. There's no way that figure could get the, the brass ring. For that matter, the figure can't even get on the horse. The legs of the horse, horse are such that it's unreachable. I have a painting called Refusal of the Brass Ring, which is a little more profound, I think. This has to do with a child or an adult, for that matter, simply refusing to be successful. That's almost an anti-American feeling. In America, one of your goals is to be successful. To say you want to be anything else is, is suspect. Cartmel's surreal coaster catastrophes cause coaster cars to derail and riders to fly through the air in euphoric abandonment. Derailment number one has to do with catastrophe in the worst sense. People are flying off the roller coaster. The car is falling to bits. In fact, the whole painting is falling to bits. And you notice on the right, there's a head very calmly watching it all. That could be an angel watching all the havoc it's created, or it could be a self-portrait. I could be the one that's very coolly watching this catastrophe. <laughs> 